my fellow Americans. It is time we kill without mercy. We plan and launch attacks on America and other civilized nations. And we will not fail. What are we talking about? Zombies? That's exactly what we're talking about. I'm on approach from the southwest. Agents, listen up. We don't have much to go on. All we know is that he is creating a toxin in the form of a gas that reanimates the dead. Valentine, I need you to track down Nemesis. Try to find out who else he is working with. But listen, this is a seek and destroy mission. Roger. We think he has the antitoxin in one of the canisters on his backpack. Once you eliminate the target, bring them in so we can have them analyzed. You're on your own, agents. Godspeed. Before he became the nemesis, Marcus was my partner. I thought he was dead. I'm not sure how I feel that he's not. He was part of the same Black Ops network as Javier Tashita. Clock and Dagger, CIA, James Bond type of shit. His specialty was biochemical weaponry. Rogue agent Aaron Keener stole a deadly toxin Marcus created and used it to take out the division in New York. Marcus feels responsible for all those deaths. So when New York went dark, Marcus went with it. Here in DC, and it smells like shit. Valentine, you owe me one. Whatever, Leon. You get to run around and pop zombies in the head. I know you're loving it. At the chatter, you two. Last report, he was seen going into the dark zone. He never came out. Until now. HQ, I found the lab. I also figured out why the city smells so bad. Nice work, Leon. Burn it down, get to Valentine. I'm on it. When the Dark Winter fires hit, Marcus's unit disappeared into the shadows of the chaos. Rumor is, they created a new, highly covered unit, calling themselves the Hunters. Valentine, if that's true, it's no coincidence that his emergence as a nemesis is in DC. He's trying to flush out the Hunter Killer the shade agent responsible for taking out his brothers. He's turned his back against the division. Marcus is gone. He's lost his way, but I know he's in there. I can't take the shot. Damn it, Valentine, we don't have time for this. Leon, what's your ETA? I'm two clicks out. Valentine, sit tight. I'm on my way. Agents, thank you for watching episode two of the Manhunt Nemesis Division Two miniseries. Each episode has a unique cinematic intro from the character's perspective as they chase down the nemesis. They also include the character's build specs, gameplay, and an amazing soundtrack for you to bob your head to. I'll drop a link here for you to check out Leon next. Head my way if you'd like to see heads pop off. <laughs> Nemesis doesn't say much, but if you missed episode one, it's a must see. I'll drop all episode links in the description area below. This Mantis build is my most reliable build in the game. It has survived all the title updates and is great for all types of content, including heroic control points, legendary missions, summit, you name it. In fact, the DPS on this build is amazing. It's one shot, one kill, 
and you can basically chain kill an entire control point and hardly ever move from the same spot. So there's a few reasons why I'm highlighting this build right now. One is that we have the Hollywood event coming up in about a week and a half. And for these types of events, I love equipping this build. That's because you get extra XP for headshots. Furthermore, you get extra XP for headshot chain kills. And I wanted to share with you how great it is to use a sniper rifle build with these events because it really helps you farm that XP and get those red stars so you can buy those cash. The second reason is that I'd like to challenge you to think about your sniper builds a little bit differently. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's go ahead and take a look at the Mantis. So the core attribute gives you 111% headshot damage and the scope mod gives you 40% headshot damage. So right off the bat, you're good for a headhunter build, which requires 150% headshot damage to maximize it. On top of that, it comes with a two prong talent called In Plain Sight. One, headshot and weak point damage against enemies not targeting you is amplified by 50%. That's a ton. Two, headshot kills reset the cooldown of the decoy skill. This is a big deal. You can have 100% uptime on that skill. And not everybody knows this, but in the most recent patch, 12.1, the devs fixed this feature. So let's review that more closely. So headshot kills reset the cooldown of the decoy skill. So for those of you who are new to the Mantis, the way it was working before is you throw your decoy, and once it timed out, you had to get another headshot in order for it to reset, which wasn't that big of a deal, but if you're in a crunch or you're getting rushed, having that skill at the ready makes a world of difference. But now it works as it reads. So I toss out my skill, I get my 30 headshots or whatever, that cooldown reset stays on standby until my decoy expires. So for skills, I'm obviously running the decoy, and for my other, I'm using the fixture drone. So let's jump into the chest piece. As I alluded earlier, this is a headhunter build, and I'm going with an Araldi chest piece. You could also use Providence, and if neither of those are options for you, then use the named version called Chain Killer, which is a Walker and Harris that has perfect headhunter. So it comes with 10% marksman rifle damage, 10% headshot damage, it has max hazard protection. I prefer that to be weapon handling or repair skills, but it is what it is. And I put a 10% headshot damage mark. Now, some people might say that sniper builds are better with crit chance and crit damage because you can net more damage output with them. But this is where I'd like to challenge you to think a little bit differently about your sniper builds, especially headhunter sniper builds. With that said, let's get into the talent and then we'll circle back on that. So I hate reading these verbatim to you, but I sort of have to in order to make my point. So Headhunter, after killing an enemy with a headshot, your next weapon hit within 30 seconds deals an additional 125% of that killing blows damage. And if you have at least 150% headshot damage, ding ding, your damage is capped at 1250% of your weapon damage. Okay, a couple of points I gotta make here. One is the vast majority of elites in this game, whether you're playing legendary or heroic, can be one-shotted with headshots ranging between eight and 15 million. So having too much weapon damage on a sniper build is actually a thing, especially with the headhunter talent. This talent allows you to get chain kills, right? And so the only kill that matters, the only thing you need to build for is that first kill, which is why if you're using this talent, you don't want crit chance in crit damage. And the reason is very simple. It's based on percentages. So let me explain it this way. If you max out your crit chance and throw in a bunch of crit damage, when you land that headshot, there's only a 60% chance that you're going to crit. That might sound great, but this isn't an SMG. This is not an assault rifle. This is a one bullet, one kill build. So of course, if I flip that stat on its head, then there's a 40% chance that you're not going to crit. And when we're talking about a weapon that only holds seven rounds, that means only four will have a chance at critting. So although you can put out more damage with a crit, with a headhunter build, you're basically gambling on whether that even matters. Again, that's because it's the first kill that sets the chain killing into effect and you only have a 60% chance to use the full potential of your build. So on the other hand, if you spec into headshots, you have a 100% chance of hitting at the full potential of your build. And although it might be less than a crit chance build, 
it's more than enough to take down the vast majority of elite enemies. But if you're going to run focus, that's a different story. If you're not familiar with the headhunter talent, I'll just let you know that after the first kill, it does all the work. The enemies just fall over like dominoes. They're basically made out of butter. All you have to do is have enough power to take down that first target. And if you have a chance, always go for the non-elites first because they're the easiest. Okay, I'm going to take this into the testing range in a moment. But before we do, let's take a look at the knee pads. So I'm running Sawyer's Exotic Knee Pads. And they're great because they have Stand Your Ground, which is both an offensive and defensive talent. So basically, you get 3% weapon damage increase for every one second you're not moving up to 10 stacks. So if you can stay still for 10 seconds, you get 30% additional weapon damage. So these are super powerful, but you know what? I only need to use them for the first kill because after that, again, the Headhunter talent just sort of takes over all the damage output I need. So although as a sniper, you're fairly planted, no, you don't have to stay still the whole time. You only need this for your first kill. And the same goes for my backpack. So I'm running Providence for my backpack for that 15% headshot damage, of course. And then I got 10% headshot damage on it. It's got crit chance already on it. I'd prefer that to be weapon handling or repair skills, but there it is. And then I have a 10% headshot damage mod. And then for the talent, I'm running Vigilant, which increases total weapon damage by 25%, but taking damage disables this buff for four seconds. Of course, the gift is the perfect version of this, which drops that to three seconds. Again, it doesn't matter if it deactivates. You only need it for the first kill. All your damage only matters for that first kill. Then Headhunter takes over. So for the rest, I'm running three pieces of aces and eights. And I'm sort of going to go quickly because they all look the same. They all have max weapon damage and headshot damage. And of course, I'm running Sharpshooter for my specialization, and that's because it gives you additional weapon handling and headshot damage. Okay, here's a high-level snapshot of the build. And as far as secondary weapons go, you can pretty much use whatever you like. I like to use the shotgun in case I get rushed. And as far as the pistol goes, I recommend actually the card with additional skill tier. It can help out with your healing power if you need it. Okay, let's head over to the testing range real quick. All right, so I have this thing all set up on Heroic Elite. Okay, so we're on our way here. I got my Sawyer's knee pads fully charged. This is a heroic elite. And as you can see, we one shot everything, of course. That's Headhunter doing all the work. So let's step this up to a named elite. And we get the same results as expected. One shot, one kill. So it's rare that you encounter enemies stronger than that. So if you have a nemesis that's hitting at 60 million, it's sort of like, so what? Why not use the Mantis that's faster and has a talent that synergizes with the skill? Again, Headhunter gives you all the power you need. So we'll test this on an invulnerable elite here just to see what damage we're hitting at in the range. And we get at about 25 million. So in some of the gameplay I have reanimated on, and it shows that the Mantis is hitting up to 45 million. Without the event, it's more like 25 million. So I'm including footage with both the reanimated event on and turned off. For example, here's Capitol Hill Legendary with reanimated deactivated.
So I'm running this solo as a sniper, and as you can see, it's a clean sweep. Dogs are sort of a pain in the butt with the sniper build, but I think with the Achilles Pulse, that won't be a problem anymore. Chungas aren't that bad, actually, with the sniper, because you can take out their weak points. And that is the single biggest advantage that the Mantis has over the Nemesis, is that it highlights the weak points of the enemy which is very useful when you're playing in the fog or in the dark. You not only know where the enemy is across the field, but it highlights their head for you. And because of the talent, when you hit those weak points and the enemy's not targeting you, you get that 50% amplified damage. That's basically like having the Achilles Pulse built into the Mantis. It's like having a skill inside the Mantis right now. This build has enough power. I don't need any more power. In fact, full disclosure, it probably has too much power. I actually have another build that I created where I started rolling out the weapon damage for armor and included two pieces of bellstone. It's a great build for legendary. It still one shots non-elites and then headhunter takes over from there. If you want to run that build, it's definitely a good build to run. If you want to do that, just replace your backpack and your chest piece with bellstone but keep the talents the same. Another thing you can do is replace some of these headshot mods with repair skills. Okay, I'll quiet down so you can watch the rest of this gameplay and enjoy the music. But definitely stick around to the end. I got a couple links for you so that you can watch the additional episodes. And you definitely don't want to miss Leon's build. It's really cool. Agents, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you're enjoying the storyline. Be sure to watch the other two episodes of the Manhunt Nemesis miniseries. As always, my signature cinematic intros make every build video I make worth your time. Not to mention the unique builds I hope you try. Links here and in the description area below. And I'm out.